Okay, so a couple things come to mind. Uh, are you were you ever at those VC OEB meetings? I presented at one or two, maybe like. 2019, 2018? I don't know, because I had just learned about them in the last couple of years. I had tried to attend them. They were public in the Federal Register, right, saying that open session. Uh, I ended up being told I had to leave one of them. The next day, there were cops surrounding the door. Multiple times I went, but what I actually witnessed and saw was veterans living on the soldier's home uh, being denied access to even listen into what was being said in those quarterly meetings, let alone speak. You know, it just seemed like it was an environment that for whoever, you know, was having authority in the room, wasn't able to hear the people who actually went that were living there, you know, so it's kind of... I I agree completely. It's the same thing with the town halls, which I had attended and even presented at you know, it's, it's not genuine. If I was a veteran residing on the campus, I would go to one VCOAB meeting and never go again. Like, it's sort of this performative thing where, exactly like you're saying, the folks who, in my opinion's voices matter, you know, leaps and bounds more than anyone on the VCOAB or in that room are being turned away, stifled, like ignored. And it's, I think it's, effed up is, I mean, the easiest way to say it. Like, I just don't think the VCOAB or even town halls could be a reliable forum. Isn't uh, your wife on the VCOAB or is that, is that incorrect? She, she flagged the TSA issue um, and has really big issues with the allegations there and they're basically like, yeah, it's cool. We don't, we don't have an issue with it. Well, I so and you're referring to Thomas Afron and the uh, the council yeah. member Price, right? Her and I talked about it, and I was like, this to me seems like a really credible uh, story here that you know there could be foul play. Like you could just follow the open corporates of when they open these sub businesses when they receive money from you know, the spouse of current price and then when they got, you know, HHH money or when they got a donation and she called it out and it was basically like, yeah, it's fine. These people, they just don't care. Like they're, some of the members, I guess they're friends with staff. Yeah, it's just, it's pretty futile to try to, to push when people are willing to accept this. But, you know, want to deny veterans or want to, like, investigate veterans at CTRS on some BS. But, you know, I'm speaking very fiery now, but Thomas Saffer can get away with this unscathed, not even justifying it. And they have him present all of the documentation to prove his innocence. And if he's not willing to do that, like, let's pause all of their developments until we get to the bottom of it. He had a press conference like days after. Maybe it was like. I know when I heard that, I like my. I I don't even. I was speechless. I was like, "How could VA not pull him off the speaker? Like, have it emceed by any other human being other than him?" Did you happen to see the uh, me ask him about it or no? I saw some of the. This was like the hour video. Yeah, but the first. Right, but the very beginning is actually me asking him about that specifically. No, what did he say? I'll I'll watch it. Uh, He says it's bogus. I am paraphrasing, but something like it's bogus. And and, uh, it's just a political, you know, thing type situation. You know, it's just political. So, you know, there was about an hour long Zoom that we had uh, just before... His the one of the buildings opened. I'm forgetting the building uh, number. Two hundred seven. And uh, the reason I'm mentioning that is we did do a Zoom with him before, and you know he was mentioning that he paid for the original master plan, and that he was trying yeah. to get his money back. Who Saffron? Correct. So I understood the original master plan was done by HLK, and that was the contract that 
was issued in 2015. Then Johnson's fame, at their own expense, like dusted it off or tried to like rework it with updated visuals. But I have no aware. This is the first time I've ever heard that Saffron had involvement financially or at all with the original master plan. So when was the your, second one. when was your understanding that he got involved? Like twenty. 18 or 19 when the principal developer was selected that was the first time i ever heard of thomas saffron and and associates and what is there a copy of that contract or any anything regarding people who applied um i I don't have i think i have a copy of the solicitation are you aware of or maybe you're part of the creation of it uh the west LA draft master uh yeah so I was part of the original creation of it it has changed a boatload from um but I'm happy to share info on it if you have questions what entity is it's the contractor that um GLA has brought on board to help with a lot of master planning that's the, it's concourse federal group I see. So, and they are currently uh, maintaining this page, essentially. They are, yeah. I guess. What is your perspective on Concourse Federal and, and what they're doing? I think Concourse Federal Group, uh, in its current capacity, is there the gross bastardization of the original contract that was issued that I worked on. Um, it has become a pain, pain for the extraordinarily greedy and exploitative owners. Um, It's far too big to be effective. I think it's a massive waste of money. I mean, it's a $50 million IDIQ contract that is probably gonna be exhausted within four years. And it was supposed to be 10 years. And I asked, could that 50 million have been spent elsewhere. I don't know. It's just, it's tough for me to watch when, you know, the owners buy houses in Italy and in Denver and cars for each other and do all these really odd, I guess, air quotes, savvy, what I would call scumbaggy, you know, business decisions so that they can do all this stuff under their company. But what, what has it really generated? I guess regarding what you know and, and paying to play, because that's what appears to be the whole thing, obviously, is you have these super wealthy elitist Tom Saffron, in my opinion, being at the top. I guess what direction do you suppose I could go in to find more info or where, where is the, the law being broken? Because without doubt, I don't see how this could occur without. Right. Um, yeah, that's a very interesting question. Um, the principal developer one is, it's tough because like I said, there's just this opinion, this long held legal opinion that, you know, central office at the secretary level that VA cannot build housing. And that has been this absolute unquestionable truth that has, you know, led to the prolific EUL program that VA manages and led to this principal developer solicitation. The cost for this stuff is astronomical. I've looked at this, like the finances, um, actually, while I'm on with you, let me see if I can find, um, and do you mean like the development in terms of like, I know for that building, that first ribbon cutting, it was like 900 plus thousand dollars per studio. It took Thomas Saffron over eight years to build. Yeah. The 50 years. And that's what I'm saying. Like a look at the performa, which I, I have to believe is publicly available. Like it, it, it's absurd that it costs this much. Like, let me see. So MacArthur Field, that's a different one. Let's see, building 404, which was just the ribbon cutting, that's gonna be 73 veteran units. The total cost for that is 46.6 million. That's That's 639,000 a unit. 
building 402, 120 units, 74.6 million, 622,000 a unit. This is astronomical. I mean, even in LA, like you could get a house maybe further out for the price of one single unit. How much of this is? Dude, these things don't overhead? even have onion ovens. A right. Lot. Well, yeah. So it's it's like, how could it cost this much? I'm just trying to figure out what makes it cost that much. It's not the construction, especially new construction. 404 and 402 are brand new buildings. It's not like they're renovating a historic building and have to account for preserving, you know, a roof shingle that fell off that is technically contributing to the historic character. VA is providing capital contribution. Why do they cost that much? And Wells Fargo, as far as... Well, oh, yeah, nightmare. They're part of both of them. So how, how could they even be involved? That seems where it's, it's actually a real problem. It, how are they taking these tax credits? But how is it affordable housing if Wells Fargo needs to be involved? You know, they have like bonds and loans, but they do SIDLAC TCAC applications. They do historic tax credits. How is Wells Fargo involved? Regarding the town center and that lease, was that constructed by Concourse Federal or? No, so that's another one that I think to stop progressing it until, you know, there are the conversations that you and I discussed, but also to say that it is not the principal developers. The award they received when they were selected said that VA has the right to outlay certain parcels for housing. In nowhere in there does it charge them with developing a town center. But they have been, they being the principal developer team, have been very, uh, like, adamant and far forward leaning that the town center is within their scope and that they want to be the ones to develop it. Like, that to me is a concern because they argue all the time or tell us that this stuff is unprofitable. If that was the case, then why would you be pushing so hard to develop the town center? You mentioned also general counsel, like on the last call. Who is that or what are, who are those people? Um, when I was there, it was, um, what the hell's her name? Lane Dig, I think, was like a really high up counsel for VA. L-A-N-E? Um, yeah, I think, oh, hold on, let me see if I can just Google her. I think she went to work for UCLA, maybe. G-A-G-E or, or D-A-D? I think it's D-I-G. Let me, let me see if I can find it or ask. I'll, I'll text it to you. Um, so it's one person or it's a few people or? So there's a few people like Cam Gore um, was part of the real property general counsel team. So the GC that we worked with primarily or that primarily looks at land use agreements and, you know, carries out the opinion or um, reflects the opinion that came from the general counsel is Real Property Law Group. When I was working there, Cam Gore was the head attorney that we worked with. Oh, here it is. Sorry. It's Lane D-I-L-G. She was just a very loud attorney voice uh when i first started where do you see me going next or do you have any thought (laughs) on justice and and getting the entities that are doing wrong off right like i think public awareness is growing i i think we're on the same page of thomas saffron is misperforming there right um and then anything also with village for vets Regarding. I agree with you there. That's what I was going to say. Is I would lean in there to the extent so, you want to. So what? What do you think for Villa regarding that? Um. So you know it'll probably be difficult. Um. I'll just I'm just going to rant here. I don't know Go if it's going to make sense, but I'll like tool it down uh, probably after the fact when I process. But you know they got that SSVF grant for like the 1.3 million. Um. I suggest that they put these compliance structures into place because they have their own emergency fund, 
but VA through SSVF has the temporary financial assistance TFA. They are blending the money together. And so VA would just need to do an audit to, to find out that they're using government money that is not in alignment with the regulations in the NOFO, you know, any of the, like, the guidance that they've got as accepting the grant. It sounds like they might get another grant uh, for CTRS, like twice the size. And if that happens, like, I'm, I'm gonna lose my mind. They're not fit for it. It's a disservice to veterans. Like, they, it's Marcy against the world. The other thing is that I'm trying to, uh, that I think that you mentioned is probably the biggest key in everything that's been stated is why the VA feels or has made up this illusion that they can't build uh, on the VA, you know, why, or feed veterans at the VA, like why, why the VA feels like it cannot do these things is certainly seems like a problem. Yeah, it 100% is. Do, do you believe that the town center, it's not like too late, right? I mean, it, it could be like stopped, correct? Or do you? Yeah, I, I think it can be. Wow. And I think this is one where the pressure like could actually wow. help. Um, just getting more awareness of it out. You know, if you were to listen in on a call that you know, Thomas Saffron and Tyler Monroe and Brian DeAndre are having about the town center. I'm confident, like, oh, yeah, this is in the bag. Like, but I think it needs to be stopped entirely. Right. I I agree. Um, like, I don't want to be that guy. I know we don't know each other well at all, but these rich old white dudes constantly seem to be causing all these issues and getting away with it and making a shitload of money because of it. Like... How much money does this guy need? Right. Like, That's what. And same with Marcy. It's like, why I know. can't it? Why can't they just stop? And like, she doesn't really want to help. She wants to be the face of it. She wants to continue amassing her own personal wealth and throwing pennies to veterans, and you know, hopefully, or thinking she can sleep at night. Like, so you think asking for transparency and and basically village for vets would help with some type of IG investigation maybe? Yeah, and what I'm gonna do is I'm, I'll try to get you something today. If not, I will for sure tomorrow and you can text me if you don't get anything. I'm gonna try to pull together some of the documents I have from Village for this. Um, you know, the email that you were referencing when we first talked, you know, I shared that along with a bunch of other stuff with Rob Reynolds. And then when Ryan Thompson like forwarded it to the secretary and all of that, like, Rob was like, hey, I'm sorry, you know, it happened. I'm like, look, it's fine. My hope is I'm sharing stuff for folks who are, are much, you know, bolder and able to sort of lean forward on this stuff to do with it. Yeah, like I said, I'll send you a bunch of stuff. I'll collate it. Um, I may email you a Dropbox link. You know, it'll be secure if it, depending on how much stuff I have. Um, yeah. All right. Well, appreciate you. You have a good rest of the day. You too. All right, Senate. I'll talk to you. Late. Later.